Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to check the Gepper C Thinking P16 HD, the first micro quadcopter as far as I know, which features the new Codex Vista Nebula HD transmission system. In this video, I'm going to quickly go over its features and specs, show you how to set it up, and head outdoors and test it out. In terms of packaging, inside the box along with the quadcopter, you can find some stickers, a Phillips screwdriver, some zip ties, a couple of extra screws, two basic battery velcro straps, and two sets of Gemfen 1636 propellers. The Gepro C Thinking P16 is available in two versions. The HD version, which is the one I have, comes with the Cadix Vista Nebula, which works with the DJI Digital Transmission System, and the 4K version comes with an analog 5.8 GHz video transmitter, and is equipped with the new Cadix Loris FPV 4K HD recording camera. In addition, both options are available with or without a radio receiver. In terms of specs, the Gepro CP16 features 1103 8000 kV motors, which can handle up to 3S batteries. On the front, partially protected by the robust canopy, you can find the Cadix Nebula camera. On the center of the quadcopter, you can find a whoop style 25 by 25 mm all-in-one F4 flight controller. It supports up to 4S LHV batteries, features an integrated 12 ampere 4-in-1 BLLES ESC, and came pre-flashed with Betaflight 4.1.6. On top of the flight controller, mounted to the top canopy, you can find the Cadex Vista digital transmission unit, and the simple linear antenna is connected to it and mounted on the back of the frame. In addition, the P16 is using an XT30 battery connector, and the battery is designed to be mounted on the bottom of the quadcopter using these plastic mounts, or if you'd like, you can simply remove them and use the provided battery strap. As for the frame, it is made out of modern plastic, it is flexible and durable, its wheelbase is 79mm, and it features a squash X pattern. The weight of the Gepper CP16 is 66.5 grams. Including a GMB 520 mAh 2S LHV battery, it weighs about 95 grams. And including a 3S 300 mAh LHV battery, which is the one that I recommend to use in case you're not going to trim down the plastic battery bay in order to use bigger batteries, the total weight is 92.4 grams. When setting up the P16, you should keep in mind that its all-in-one flight controller features only one single full UART interface, and that's the reason soft serial must be enabled and some ports need to be remapped in order that the Cadix Vista and the radio receiver will work properly. All the settings are going to be pre-configured for you out of the box, but in case you are going to update the firmware of the flight controller, it is something that you need to keep in mind. So what I recommend to do before configuring the quadcopter is to head over to the CLI tab on MetaFlight, type the word if, press enter, and save the results to your computer. I also recommend to save the dump file, which I'm going to include in the description box of this video, so in case things go wrong, you can reflash the flight controller with Betaflight 4.1.6 and apply the default settings. By the way, another thing that you should keep in mind when installing the propellers is that out of the box, the motor direction is reversed, so make sure to install the propellers accordingly. The next thing that I've done is to test the P16 using different settings. First, I tested it using the stock settings. Then I flashed the 4-in-1 AC with Jazz Maverick Frimer in order to enable Betaflight's RPM filter. And finally, I flashed the flight controller with Betaflight 4.2.0. After testing it out, I can tell you that first of all, in my opinion, the most suitable battery for this quadcopter is a 300mAh 3S LHV battery, because a 3S battery just wasn't powerful enough, and if you are going to trim the plastic parts and use bigger 3S batteries, the quadcopter is just going to be too heavy. Secondly, I can tell you that after testing all the settings, the quadcopter actually flew better using the stock settings, so I don't recommend to adjust them and just fly the quadcopter the way it is. As for flight time, which is pretty short since this is a pretty heavy build for its size, you can expect about 2 minutes using a 2S 520mAh LHV battery, which anyway I don't recommend using, and using the 300mAh 3S LHV battery, you can expect between 2 to 3 minutes depending on how you fly. As for durability, I can tell you that I crashed this quadcopter many times while flying it in the playground and it is still in one piece. However, my main concern are the motor wires which are a little bit too long and can get damaged and Gepro C definitely should have used shorter ones. Finally, I can also tell you that this linear antenna performed great and anyway, you're not going to get too far with this quadcopter because you're going to be limited by your battery. As for the big question, should you get it or not, I think that if you have the DJI Digital Transmission System and you're looking for a small, relatively safe quadcopter which you can fly around your home and also around parks, the P16 is definitely something to consider, 
but keep in mind that due to the added weight of the Vista system, it is not as light as other similar non-HD quadcopters, and the flight experience is not going to be as enjoyable, at least in my opinion. I'm going to wrap up this video with some flight footage, which hopefully is going to help you to make your mind whether you want to get it or not, and as always, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video, and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notifications bell if you're not already subscribed. See you on my next videos, and goodbye.